Today, from the Kingdom, it's the Houston Oilers versus the Seattle Seahawks. And Alonzo Heisman. And he is stopped by Brian Bosworth, who returns to action. Defensively, Jacob Green, Joe Nash, and Jeff Bryant up front. Schultz, Bosworth has been out two weeks with that injured shoulder, had a little surgery on it. Wyman, who was great last week, and Tony Wood. Taylor Jenkins, Moyer, and Robinson in the secondary, and they're a little thin in the secondary. Gain of four. It is second down and six. Gibbons in motion. And Rozier, first down. And so the Oilers opening with a running attack. Third and eight. And the pass is complete far side, and it should be the first down. Third and seven, Highsmith, the remaining back. Same, same spot as there, the touchdown. Drew Hill. And this time, he put an affair on it. That was a perfect play. Zendejas to attempt the point after, and it is good. And Houston on the opening drive moves out in front of the Seahawks by a score of seven to nothing. You're right. They came right back to it, Charlie. The Seahawks had four people to cover three receivers in the backfield. And Drew Hill was the only man who had double coverage, and he split the two safeties going straight down the middle of the field. Watch it. Safety in the middle of the field. Moon looks to his left to move the safety. And by that time, Robinson, number 41, is beaten. Dean is out of the play completely, but Hill was the only one who had any form of a double coverage. What it was is a free safety in the middle. Number uh, 41, Eugene Robinson, was looked away by Warren Moon, but they used him as, no, as, no ta at a, as a nose tackle often enough. He's a good football player. Greg, into traffic, pass is complete to John Spagnola. First down. Spagnola's first reception of the season. Seattle open with a double tight end set. And a pickup of 16 on the second play from scrimmage, first down at the 44. Yeah, yesterday I asked Dave Craig, you know, because of the injury, do you want to get on the field and get your feet underneath you by running the, play, the ball a little bit? He said, well, actually, we're hoping that Houston thinks they want that I want to get my feet underneath me and uh, put a couple of running plays up. But we're going to come out throwing, and sure enough, Spagnola with the catch. And upset today, it's a final. Kansas City, 31, Cincinnati, 28. So Cincinnati's record is now eight and three. That means if Houston wins here today, they are now tied with Cincinnati for the lead in the Central Division. And here's Warner, a little dip. He's around the corner, good move. And then drilled out of bounds. Jeff Donaldson really nailed him and hit him high. A gain of 10. We tend to, we tend to now gather more viewers. Those watching the Kansas City. Section from Dave Craig. Houston leading Seattle by a score of seven and I think a gain of 13 on the play, which is Johnson with a defensive stop for you. And the Seahawks on the move. Third down and 12. Shut up. Williams back to block. Diamond Patter touchdown. man-to-man -man all over the field again. There you see the blitz by the safety. It looked like Donaldson 31 going by. The Blades make sure this time of the play. He's beating Richard Johnson, number 23. Take a look at it from another angle. Johnson was just beaten right at the line of scrimmage. When you've got a receiver like Blades, you've got to bump him. If you miss him at the line, it's over. Extra point, Largent is holding. That's a change of holders. Normally, as Jeff Kemp, he's inactivated for this game. It is good. We are tied. It is 7-7 in the kingdom. Houston from the 20. Gibbons in motion. Rozier to the 26-yard line. Was a quarterback for Mouse Davis at Portland State, and he's taking the offense with him. He's a warm three of five. And hits this one, and it is complete to Ernest Gibbons. And he has the first down. 
This is Ken Baring, the new owner of the Seattle Seahawks. We met him before the ball game and had a chance to visit with him. And one of the most personable yeah. owners of the National Football League team I've, I've ever met. Yes, he invited Very us nice to come down and visit him. You know, in his place of estate outside of Oakland, in the Bay Area. We accepted. <laughs> he said, I'll send a car for you. I said, well, believe me, we'll be there. <laughs> Boone scrambles. He'll have the first down. He's got it to the 40, and then he heads out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So a good scramble for Warren Moon and a first down for Houston. Zendejas, a 52-yard field goal attempt. He's got the distance. He has it. 52 yards away out of the hold of Brent Peace. I must tell you, in all honesty, that if I saw him coming down the street as Spider-Man on a motorcycle, I would have some doubt. <laughs> Tip that is in the air. Houston has an interception at the nine yard line. Big break for the Oilers. And I mentioned earlier, take a look at a middle of your screen, gets the right paw off. That's what it was. And what great reaction for a defensive lineman, not only batting up in the air, but having enough presence of mind to go up with both hands at its height. Well, not quite as it high at its highest point, but uh, a nice play by Richard Bird. He was a defensive end previously. Ice Smith, the remaining back. To throw. Has a man wide open. And it is intercepted. It's blocked by Paul Bayer. Bayer kicking in the lead. Here's a look at the interception. Zone coverage. Watch when Hill comes off the ball. Everybody drops off. That's how you know it's a zone. And Moyer is lurking in the. In in the middle of the end zone, it's a bad play on the part of Warren Moon. He has to know it's zone when he sees them all drop off like that. And if you're going to throw the football down there, you've got to throw it right now off the line of scrimmage, not deep in the end zone. Moyer with his sixth interception leading the team. We have 11-41 left to go in the first half. Greg deep over the middle. Has championship if they can win today and if uh, Cleveland continues to slide. Here's the draw. John L. Williams. Around the corner. 50, 45. First down. Steve Largent, 1977. At age 23. That is when the record started. And of course, so November the 13th, 11 years ago to the day. That's exactly 11 years. Of course, he was originally a member of the Houston Oilers team. They yeah. traded him here to Seattle. It is tipped. It is still caught at the 29-yard line by Ray Butler. Patrick Allen had very tight coverage on it. A gain of 10 first down. Good hold, and oh, it's Aaron Poole. It doesn't get any closer. And we've got a tie ball game. It is Houston 10 and Seattle 10, a 40-yard field goal. Norm Johnson concerned about the change in holders. Take a look at the ball as it nicks the right upright and deflects back in for a good field goal. Right. There, you're right. Just, they just hooked enough. They can't get any closer than that. Oh, yeah. Second down. Loss of about half a yard. Officially in the second down and ten. Four man rush. Greg has pressure. He's hit. And it is almost intercepted. Larson saves the interception. Turns into a defender. And Bull Donaldson into a cartwheel. And look at that innocent look as he comes back. That was almost, was that almost, was that almost Jeff Donaldson was the defender? Was it almost offensive pass interference? What's yeah, it? The, the, it was a, an odd motion. I, it yeah. may have been that uh, Craig was a nice play by Larson. Oh, yeah. Donaldson oh, yeah. down yeah. his head. It's a great play. But the ball, look at the flight of the ball. It's it's very unusual. And this is the second time that Larson turns into a defensive back to prevent the interception. Good well, play. Yeah, well, Craig was hit just with the release. That's the reason it was floating. They could have dropped a flag on Larson, though, could they not? Well, offensive interference, yeah. but I think he was there right where the ball was. I okay. Craig has pressure again. He rolls out. He's got more pressure. He circles back. Now he throws, and it's the break. It's quite a scramble on the yeah. part of Craig. I mean, he doesn't show any awareness for the seven weeks away because of that injured shoulder. Watch this. This is a Frank Tarkin move right there, isn't it? 
Yes, that's that a does. Move. That's a Fran Tarkinian move. But then it floated. Yeah, it did float <laughs> downfield, and, and, and Scancy really paid for it. Right there. And that's the open, open sure spot was. right on the ribs. Highsmith cuts back. To the 50, has a block downfield. And is out of bounds at the 26-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. That's kind of Mickey Mouse. Isn't it? <laughs> Rozier. Notice the, notice the moves that is that Pinkett? No, that is. It's Alan Pinkett. Emron Herrera, former Seahawk, and uh, receiving a special watch. That's a flashback watch when they take one of the highlights of the past. They show it in the two-minute warning up on the Diamond Vision, and they make the award here on the field. Nice, put, nice touch yes, by the is. Seahawks. And he will lose three. Maybe second down and 13 at the 19 yard line. Perhaps the best matchup of the day is Dean Seinkel, Time number out. 70, a first round draft choice of the Houston Oilers a few years ago. A tough, Houston, good blocker against Jacob out. Green, number 79. Jacob won that one, didn't he? Take, oh, he sure. Left side of your screen, 79. Testing. Take a look. He beats the block by Testing. Seinkel, and boom, right oh. in the back, you're four yards deep. Nice play on the part of, of Green. And Houston takes his timeout, Testing. stopping the clock. Moon incomplete his last six throw. So he's missed six in a row. Wide open is Duncan. And he is out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Fourth down and one. All right, we're ready now to start the second half. Draw, Highsmith. First down. And more. Oh. Oh, he put his stiff arm on Robinson, and then took him with it. A good old-fashioned stiff arm. Oh, yeah. He reminds me a lot of Earl Campbell when he runs. He has that number on. Take a look at the stiff arm. The fake right at the line of scrimmage. He beats the linebacker coming up front. That's 92, David Wyman. And then the stiff arm underneath Eugene Robinson. And at the end, Robinson gets a little mad right at the end because he could have just pushed him out of bounds. But no, no, no. After I get the stiff arm, I got to ride that horse down. He took it for another 11 yards before he finally got him. A total of 15 and a first down. That's a football player there. Houston, 49-yard line. Six in the secondary, anticipating one move to throw on first down. And he comes back with a draw. Two great fakes inside by Pinker to the 27 yard line. Moon takes a lot of time. Pass is complete to Hill and Hill to the 15, 14 yard line. Officially the 13 yard line. First down, quarterback sneak all the way, two yard line. It's going to be first down and goal to go. There was a gap there. Moon does not even call a, a snap number or color. As soon as he sees it, he just passes the center and they go with it. Exactly that. He, he taps the center and goes. They had a play called at the line of scrimmage, but look at the hole right in the middle. There's nobody there. He pushes. Let's go, Pennison, yeah. number 52. We're getting downfield. And Pennison with a nice block on Moyer number allows him to get a couple more yards. Pink it. And he stopped. It'll be second down and goal to go. Bosworth leading the defense. Moon on the top. Peek and touchdown. And it is good. And now 
two players switching side for the Oilers so that they have a full head of steam. And the ball is kicked off, and here's Hollis on the return after the 10, the 15 to the 20, has to move down the sideline and bumped out of bounds. Also, Steve Largent does not have a reception with 8.44 left to go in the third quarter. Patrick Allen defensively for the Houston Oilers. And there is Largent headed towards the Hall of Fame. And 11 years Holy ago today was the last offense, time he did not have a catch. Decline, third down. And that was in the ball game against the Jets. That is the third holding call. Offensive holding against the Seahawks. This one refused. Largent, the best ever. Most reception, 779, most yarded. Most seasons, 1,000 plus yards. Most consecutive game. That, uh, that's 160. I believe that should be 162. Yes, it is. Uh, don't anticipate that 163 yet. Third down. Complete at the 45, it'll be a first down. Stancy, remember, when he was stripped out in the first half, goes up and pulls this one down. Needed 20, he got 21. We'll come back to the other scores. Got away with one. Should have been intercepted. They Are they going to hold up the interception? They may say that he got it. Going into coverage, there was a flag down back at the 40-yard line. Illegal use of the hands, number 70 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. That's on Ron Mattis. And Ron Mattis uh, had a difficult game a week ago going against uh, Bruce Smith. Second and 17 of the 38. Blades, the intended receiver, but excellent coverage by Steve Brown, and Blades had to try and reach around and knock it away, and another flag. Dropped to the 27-yard line. And the reaction of the players, now the official puts the flag in his pocket, the players' reaction was that it was on Seattle again. Illegal use of the hands to the face on the offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. Well, the offensive line of Seattle having a multitude of problems. It is self-destructing. That's the yeah. fourth major foul on the Seahawks during this drive. That was a legal use of the hands to the face is you can use your hands to extend if you're an offensive lineman to block but you can't get around that face mask it'll be second and 27 at the 27 second and 27 penalty yardage the Oilers 34 the Seahawks 45 Kind of a turnaround from what it normally is. That's a good day for Houston. Yeah. Largent has his reception. Has the down. Has the This ball is underthrown, and Largent is actually well covered. He's right along the numbers, second man in. But watch him. This is the experience. It's underthrown. He comes back. He's actually very well covered by number 23, Richard Johnson. And a first down at the Houston 42. John L. Williams to the 30. John L. Williams. to slug him he makes the correct move it's a nice play action fake remember Houston is a very overly aggressive team he runs right past the linebacker now he just wants to get out of bounds because of the injury he wants to play it safe he knows he has the first down but watch the hook the right cross now see that's he's going up high he's going up to the shoulder up to, toward the head and that stuff is does not belong in professional football 
corner. Flag to the end zone. And Millard with a key block. He just took out Steve Brown. There's a look at Bush, number uh, 59 in the middle. Now, let's try to pick up Millard. He's number 71 coming around the corner. He, he makes a nice block on Brown. There it is. Is it too good of a block? Well, there's no flag there. No, That's no, no, perfectly no. It's, fine. It's for, it's for what he does now. And uh, I don't know if we have what he does now. That point. Here's Norm Johnson with the extra point attempt. And, good. and the ball game is tied at 17-17. We'll see if we have it on tape. This one to the goal line. Up to the 10. Now the 11. Excellent cover. Rufus Porter. Let's go back to the penalty following the touchdown. And right, after Kurt Warner gets into the end zone, Brian Millard, number 71, who made a great block on the corner, takes the football and has a good time. The lineman's dream, the great spike, to watch the official. Gary Lane. Gary Lane throw the flag out. And the great credit talk him out of it. He went right for it, though, didn't he? Peek at the ball carrier. Peek at first down. 32-yard line. They mark it to the 33 first down, given to motion. Here's the draw. Alonzo Heisman, 43-yard line. He'll pick up 10, should pick up the first down. Houston at their own 43, first down. We start the fourth quarter. In the traffic and a great reception and a first down at the 37-yard line as Drew Hill pulls it in. Moyer and Jenkins hit him immediately. Did not gain a lot of momentum, I must say. One move. Pass is complete. And Gibbons is out of bounds. And there's a flag down at the 36. Robinson was there. And it's going to be a face mask call. I'll take a look at it. He's just trying to get any piece he can. There's a difference between this play and the play by Bosick on the other side. The difference being that Givens was two or three yards inbounds at the time. He was going to try to get any piece of the body to try to make the tackle. One moon. Touchdown. And so Houston once again has the lead. Officially it will be for 11 yards. Looked like it was Curtis Duncan, number 80, making a, a good block on the corner. Third down and five. So Scancy in motion. The pass to the 45-yard line is complete to Ray Butler. Looking for the reverse and the flea flicker, yes. And the man deep is covered and has to come back in underneath. Excellent coverage for the secondary of Houston. Chillers, number 79, getting blocked up on Mike Wilson, 75. That's what allowed the cutback. That's how Williams sprung into the secondary. But then it's mostly all him out running a lot of people down the sideline. Williams has got more speed for a big man than most people give him credit he for. He pulled away from Donaldson. But give the credit there to Mike Wilson, a former Cincinnati Bengal with a big block on Ray Childress, who's having an all-pro year. And the extra point is good. complete. 
Drew Hill pulls it in. Moyer with the coverage. It is complete at the 50-yard line, a diving reception. And once again, it is Drew Hill who is having a great game. Here we're tied, 24-24. Third down and two. Bernardine, number 31, right part of your screen. He's coming right now. He would have been coming whether or not it was a, a one player or not. An 85, Drew Hill's got to get inside to make that block. That's part of the receiver's job. Not able to do so, indeed, with the tackle. Kirk Moore. 23 yard line, second down and seven. Now, four minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Second and seven, you got to throw the football. And he's complete Larger, Larger to Fisher. Patrick Allen brings him down after a gain of 16. They're sitting back there in the zone. Take a look at it. Larger coming underneath. Ground number 24 has got to scoot out to get him. Because that's his own. That was really not a man-to-man -man coverage, but Larger with a nice spin move inside. He doesn't have to go out of bounds because, as he knows, the smart receiver, he's got four minutes left in the contest, plus he's got three timeouts. And now the clock down to 323. We'll have a flag. Meanwhile, John L. Williams picks up nine. The Oilers were offside. Second and one. Yard line of Houston, four yards. Because they they have to run a play, and you don't want to take. That's Warner, Craig faking the bootleg that he was successful with earlier. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes left to go in the Kingdom. We are tied, 24-24. Seattle has the ball at the Houston 43. When we come back. Second and five at the 43 of Houston. John L. stretches out to the 41. Greg. Williams, first down. They already had their best stuff. They sure did, because it worked. Tight end. Kurt Warner. 33-yard line. Second down and eight behind the line. John L. 28 yard line. Now it's a 45 or 46 yard kick. His longest again this year is 47. this very play. And there it is. There's two, three laterals, and that'll be it. So in the Central Division, Cincinnati loses. Houston loses. They stay a game back. And Cleveland is going to lose. So it's 8, 3, 7, 4, and 6, 5. And in the West, it looks as if right now everything remains the same. All three. <laughs> 